The very first is by Bernardo Loreiro uh, so in Sao Paulo, and he works as a um, data journalist, data analyst, uh, has a small company there, has been using OpenStreetMap for quite a while, and he is now going to talk about um, gender of street names or gender of people who are used in naming streets all over Brazil. Hi, I'm Bernardo Loreiro, and I'll be presenting Visualizing Gender of Street Names in Brazil at uh, State of the Map 2020. Um, so first, a little bit about me. I am an urbanist by training. Um, I'm also a data analyst and developer, and uh, most of my projects are at the intersection of these fields. So anything dealing with urban issues, also data, data visualization and mapping as well. It's where I like to do my work. Um, I am the founder of Medida Sao Paulo, which is a data viz lab here in Sao Paulo, Brazil, where I am from. And um, today I'll be talking about uh, street names in Brazil, my home country, where I'm talking from also. Um, so, I know this may be different in other countries, but streets in Brazil are often named after people, usually historical figures, uh, and these people have genders. Um, so just to give you a little background on how street names are chosen in Brazil, uh, usually cities are responsible for deciding street names, and I'll bring up the example of Sao Paulo. Um, but it's probably, it's quite similar in other cities. So in Sao Paulo, it is the city planning office that decides, um, but city council members and citizens can make suggestions when there's a new street of what name that street should be given. Um, if a street is named after a person, it doesn't have to be, as we'll see, but if a street is named after a person, that person has to have died. You can't name a street after someone who's living, still living. Um, and if you are to make a suggestion uh, of a person to name a street after, you need to take that person's death certificate. So you need to uh, make sure, I mean, let them know that they actually died and bring a small biography to the city. Uh, and that biography gets attached in an archive uh, to that street's name definition. So you can always go back and check uh, why what was the biography of that person who's being uh, celebrated in that street name. Um, so here is, is an avenue in Sao Paulo called Avenida Brazil, so Brazil Avenue. Uh, as I mentioned, they don't, you don't have to name a street after a person. Uh, this is a pretty common name for streets in Brazil. You'll see uh, many Brazil avenues and many cities across Brazil. Um, this is another uh, interesting example. So this uh, elevated highway was used to be named after uh, a general who was a military uh, dictator. Um, and just recently, uh, it was the, the name was changed to uh, President, uh, President Juan Goulart, who was the president who was uh, thrown out of power by the military coup. Um, so yes, uh, it's uh, it's not common, but street names can change. Um, and the, the, the city has this website where you can look up uh, the, the history of the person, like I mentioned, that small biography. And here they talk about when it changed in 2016, uh, because it was a, a change from the military dictator's name uh, who committed crimes, uh, human rights crimes, so they actually got to change that name. Um, and just a few more examples. So this is Anita Garibaldi Street. Anita Garibaldi uh, was a woman and a revolutionary. Uh, then there is another smaller street here. Uh, 
Dr. Glechi Jokantra. So she was uh, the first, that's what the biography says, it's a small street, but she was the first nurse uh, to get a PhD in Latin America. Um, and then here we have another street, Virginia Augusta Miguel, uh, a small street in the east side of Sao Paulo, and the biography is interesting. It's a little more prosaic, so not always they have to be like historical figures, but it could be someone who was important to the community where the street's at. So it says here, uh, Virginia was born uh, October 24, 1925, in the city of Diamantina, Minas Gerais, so outside of Sao Paulo. Uh, she moved to this region and lived there for over 20 years, where uh, she had an excellent heart and always helped the, the neediest, and she distributed food, uh, medicine, and clothing, and she died in 1966. So you see, not always um, you have to be like a notorious historical figure. It could be someone who's relevant uh, to that community. So anecdotally, I knew that women were underrepresented in Brazilian street names, but I wanted to be able to quantify and to visualize this, to prove this point with data uh, and with visualizations. So for that, I needed the data. Basically what I needed was the geometry, so the, the drawings for all the streets in Brazil. I also needed the names for the streets, and I needed to be able to attribute to determine a gender for a Brazilian given name, which is not as easy as it sounds, as we'll get to that. Um, just to give you a quick sneak peek, the final result uh, looks something like this. So here uh, we have on the left the streets in Brazil uh, that are named after someone who was female uh, in the center for males and in the right hand side streets that are not named after persons so that there are no gender or at least we couldn't tribute a gender. Um, so bringing it back to the data. So where could I get all the geometry and all the names for streets in Brazil? Uh, and here is where OpenStreetMaps OpenStreetMap comes in. Um, so if you go to OpenStreetMap, uh, you can see, uh, you know, here an example, we're looking at a street in Sao Paulo, the geometry, one of the parts of it is highlighted. And on the left, you can see the tag with the name of that street. This, this street was named after a person called Teodoro Sampaio. Uh, so it's Rua Street, Teodoro Sampaio. So here I can get the geometry and the name from OpenStreetMap. So that's two parts of the data I needed. And the other part was, you know, how do I attribute this name to a gender? Um, and it turns out, you know, this there's not a, a definite answer to There's not a, you know, you, you can, it's uncommon to, you know, for example, have a man named uh, Maria, but it is possible. So this is not perfect, but we could use Brazilian census data to look at popularity of names by gender. And, and that's what I did. Um, so yeah, this doesn't achieve perfect results, but it's good enough for this purpose. Um, so the, the Brazilian census has this website where you can look up your name and you can see how popular it was uh, across decades. So how many people were named with the same name uh, across decades. And it also, you can look at rankings of name popularity by gender. So we, we see here that Maria was the most popular name in the latest census, 2010, uh, followed by Anna, then Francisca, then Antonia, so on and so forth. Um, so this, this was the data I needed, um, because, you know, if I could have the popularity, I could compare, say, Maria, how many, uh, person, female persons are named Maria in Brazil versus male and whoever the most popular was, I would say that that's the gender for that name. Um, but I needed to download this data uh, and this wasn't available on the website. Um, uh, but as you know, it frequently is, you can usually look uh, what kind of requests the website is doing uh, and find where that data is coming from. So 
I actually found that this was uh, taking those data, it was consuming it from an API. Uh, so if you've ever done some fiddling around with uh, Chrome, Google Chrome's or any other browser's network tab, uh, you can see that I will see what kind of requests your browser is making as it's loading the website, what kind of data it is pulling. Uh, and here you can see that actually that popularity ranking uh, is being pulled from an API. Um, and this is this is the data I needed, right? So the name, uh, the frequency, how many persons uh, were registered with that name uh, and with that specific gender. So F for female, M for male. Um, so basically what I did to get this data they didn't set any limits on this API, so I could just download everything, uh, transform it into a CSV file, which I open sourced, uh, put it on GitHub. And so you can see there the same data uh, in a CSV file format, which is easier for people to use. Um, so that's the, the last part of the data sources. So with this, I could attribute the gender for given names. Um, just you know, just to make a small parenthesis here, this data have been used in other projects beside this one. So an interesting project was this one, uh, where where the researchers looked at the share of properties in Sao Paulo that are owned by women, um, and you and you can see that in the center, this is this map that shows the the municipality, the city of Sao Paulo. Towards the center of the city, the share of women-owned properties is greater, and towards the outskirts, it gets smaller and smaller, um, where the income is also lower. Uh, and if, there have been other projects that use this this data that I scrape. Basically, it's a census database, but I scraped it, um, and other people by now have scraped it using their own means, anyways. But just thought that this was interesting. What other kinds of projects you could do with this? Um, okay. So now we have the data. Now what's the process of turning uh, these data into a visualization, uh, which for my purposes was a map. Um, so first I needed to download the OSM data. I'd gotten the census data already. Uh, I needed to, from the OSM data, to clean the street names. So I needed to remove street types from the name. So Anything that started with street, avenue, alley, highway, I needed to remove that so I would get the next thing and determine if that's a first name. Uh, so, you know, if it was Rua, Maria, something, I needed to take the Rua out, the street out, and just look at Maria and then tell if that's male or female. I also had to remove uh, titles and professions. So you'll, you'll maybe you'll have a street that's called Rua, uh, Professor Maria something, um, and I needed to uh, remove that or use that um, to determine the gender. Uh, then with the first name extracted, join that to the census popularity data, determine if it's male or female, uh, export this database and visualize it. Uh, so just to give you a quick look, again, a sneak peek on what the result looks like. Uh, this is the city of Sao Paulo, and the streets are colored here by gender. Uh, so red is female, blue is male, uh, gray is no gender, and white is missing data, is streets that didn't have a name uh, filled out. Um, yeah, so back to the process, uh, how to do this. So the first step, like I said, was getting the data. I used geofabrics extracts so they'll generate uh, extracts from osm data there are other many other ways of downloading osm data but i found this to be the easiest for me because i could get just all the streets for brazil in one go this was very handy um so yeah thank you geofabric uh then to clean the names and do the joining and do all the processing, I loaded the OSM data into a database, into a Postgres database. And this is just a the SQL script that, you know, takes, removes the street type, uh, looks at if there's a profession there, like doctor something, uh, and and does that part of the, of the data cleaning. Um, 
And then the next part, joining it to the, cens to the census data and, and basically saying, well, if there are more, more people, uh, more women named Maria than men, then I guess this name is female, then this street called Maria something is named, is female, you know, is named after someone with a female name. Um, like I said, there, there, there are many uh, possible issues with this approach. Some, you know, some streets you determine as being a gender and then you look at it in detail, you see they're not named after a person. I'll get into that later, but it's good enough for our purposes again. So I had the data cleaned, I had the gender attributed, and then I exported this to a GeoJSON using OGR to OGR. Um, and I had now a really big GeoJSON that I wanted to visualize it on a map. So I use it MB tiles for this. Um, NB tiles are basically, well, ways of tiling map data, and it's good because it's really compact. Uh, so they're essentially a SQL database, and um, and then I used uh, this tool by Mapbox to turn the GeoJSON into MB tiles. So I had it ready uh, to visualize and do an interactive map. And I decided to use Mapbox and mostly because I saw this map done by, this map I'll show by Vladimir Agfunkin called Road Orientations Map, uh, where uh, you'll see this is New York and on the top right hand side, it's showing the orientations of streets. So if they're north, south, east, west, and I found it really interesting that that chart got updated very quickly based on the data you're seeing on the map. So I was like, oh, maybe I can use this to display uh, street lengths. So in my map, which you see, the bar chart on the right, which updates when you move the map, shows the, the length of streets you are seeing grouped by gender. So back here, you, you know, we're looking at mostly blue there because it's mostly male. But if you do zoom on a portion of the map that by any chance has more female names, then you see the bar chart on the right updating because now we're looking, you know, mostly at female lengths. So it's, it's adding up all the lengths of the streets that you're looking at um, and grouping them by gender. Um, okay, so I guess the, you know, showing how, you, how I've made this. And then the next question is like, what do we see? What is, you know, after looking at this, what conclusions do we get? Uh, so just, just for a quick recap, uh, the color scheme uh, that I chose may be a little bit normative, but I'm sorry, uh, it's red for uh, female, blue for male, um, and then gray, no gender, and white missing data, right? So I'll show you just a few examples of things we see. Uh, so here we're looking at Sao Paulo, a big chunk of downtown Sao Paulo. No surprise there, you know, confirming that uh, anecdote, I, anecdotal data I had it, that it's mostly male. Um, uh, this is Rio, not very different. So the proportions, let me go back, are quite similar. It's mostly male, then no gender. And uh, we had a bunch of missing data there, but a, a little bit of female. Um, yeah, and if you hover on the on the bar chart, you get the sum of the lengths you're looking at. So how many kilometers of streets? Um, then you see Belo Horizonte, another big city, maybe is a little bit more balanced. Um, but there is a thing uh, when we look at some of these streets, uh, many of the female streets are named after uh, female Catholic saints or the Virgin Mary or things like that. So that's one thing. Um, and we also see those in precision. So all these streets here are named uh, floor, which means flower something. So there are different types of flower, but that's also a female name. Uh, so then it gets tricky here. We can't really say if it was, you know, it definitely wasn't a woman by looking at it closely, but uh, the method I used can't really tell the difference here if it's a flower or a person named flower, right? Um, so that's also interesting. And then we also have like, less populous regions that are last mapped out with with a lot of missing data with regards to the names 
Um, and just zooming out a bit here, we're zooming out in the state of Sao Paulo and we see highway, mostly highways and we see that then they're overwhelmingly named uh, male, right? So, um, so, so yeah, some of the results I mentioned, the majority of the names are male. Um, we see many female names from religious figures. Uh, male names have more professional, political and military titles in comparison. Um, many times I've seen that female streets have, uh, are named after women without surnames. So they're not just a historical figure. They're just like uh, street, you know, Anna, and, and that's it. No, it. Not necessarily was a, a, a historical figure. And more important streets, let's, let's say, you know, using this criteria, bigger streets like avenues, highways, have an even smaller proportion of female names. I'm running a little bit over my time here. So just to wrap it up, other things we could do is look at differences between cities is a specific city more egalitarian look more closely at titles in relationship to gender uh, and maybe look at relationship to income this was just a quick brainstorm here uh, so in the end i think that you know naming places is like so many things about power and this is why this is important so i'll close it up with a quote by rebecca solnit a writer and feminist and uh, i'll just read it uh, so some women get raised a little at time, some all at once, some reappear. Every woman who appears wrestles with the forces that would have her disappear. She struggles with the forces that will, will tell her story for her or will write her out of the story, the genealogy, the rights of men, the rule of law. The ability to tell your own story in words or in images or maybe in the name of the street is already a victory, already a revolt. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy this talk. Hope you enjoy this talk. Right, can we proceed with the questions and answers? Kind of waiting for a sign from the video of people here. I don't know if we're... Okay. Right. So, um, thank you for the talk. Very interesting. The first question that someone has asked on the pad is uh, whether you are aware of uh, similar projects that have been done in Europe. Uh, one of them is Equal Street Names, Doc Brussels, uh, and the other is uh, one that's been in, done in Serbia. The links are in the in the pad. Have you uh, looked at these projects and compared your efforts? I didn't, so I didn't know about, thanks for linking, and I, I was looking at them uh, while while the, the stream was going. Uh, really interesting projects, similar similar idea, and there are some things there, like the, the choice of colors that I liked, that maybe I should uh, Thanks for, for linking these, yeah. Good. Um, one of these projects, the uh, the Equal Street Names of Brussels project, was also um, was using um, not only uh, not only looking at name, trying to look at the names, but actually trying to link the uh, OpenStreetMap data with Wikidata, and therefore arrive at a more precise result. Is that something that you have thought about? Yeah, that's that's interesting because then uh, we could fix some of these imprecisions uh, that I talked about in the presentation, uh, like a street that's named flower and that's actually not the name, but a type of flower. Uh, so that that's a great idea of like moving this forward and getting more precise on, on attributing to actually real people. Right? There's um, one question about your, your kind of hacky way of arriving at the names by simply uh, um, scraping the API um, of the census uh, authority. Um, and there's questions about the legality of taking that data and then saying, okay, it's now open source. Uh, have you looked at the license it was under originally? Um, I didn't. Um, I'm not sure if they had, but the I, I think the thing is, this is public data. Uh, this is uh, data that has uh, been collected with public money. Uh, the census, uh, they, they open up pretty much all of their data that is anonymous. Um, and this is, this is pretty anonymous. So I didn't feel, I didn't have any concerns there doing that. Uh, but if it was like a private company data, that I think that would be totally different. Right. 
Yeah, the question actually comes from someone who, who is uh, from Switzerland. And in Switzerland, they also have data that is created with public money, but still <laughs> it's not necessarily <laughs> open source. So that may, might explain the background. I'm not familiar with the general situation in Brazil, but if you, if you say that's probably working. And another question is, <clears throat> Are there also streets that might also be that might only be named after the last name of someone and therefore require more research? Yeah, definitely. That that does happen, and I think many times that that happens, uh, there is a title in front of the name. And I have another question about this. Um, I do use the title when I have the title. I do use it to attribute the gender instead of, of the name. Um, uh, but yeah, sometimes you have professor and then the last name. That uh, that is not uncommon. Um, so yeah, there that could be an issue, definitely. All right. Um, next question concerns, but I think you have probably answered that already. Uh, exactly, how uh, did you count streets if something had multiple ways in OpenStreetMap? How did you count it? But if I understood you correctly, you just summed up the length. So you were basically about how many meters are there per name, is that or per gender? Yeah, exactly. So that that uh, fixed issue of not being able to count uh, different streets because of the ways they are they are split. Like someone pointed out in the the comments below, that's correct. Right. Did you, um, how, how long was the computing time to actually match up all the names in Brazil with the, the name database? What was, was that in any way significant or? Yeah, so I, I saw that question about how long the join uh, took and uh, looking back, I did this a while ago, looking back on my SQL, I wrote down that it took, I think seven minutes on my computer and it's not not anything special. So. I wasn't worried about making it um, faster because it was something I, I just did once then. Uh, but yeah, that wasn't a, that wasn't a big issue. Right. I'm kind of reading through the rest of the questions. They are more comments than uh, uh, well, there's, there's one that says, um, did you assess the quality of this method based on a subset? with a source of known genders, like sort of comparing, sort of measuring the scientific accuracy of the, of the approach. I, I did not, no, I didn't. That would, that would be a good idea. I actually thought about doing that, uh, taking a sample and then uh, manually checking. I didn't, I did it kind of, you know, haphazardly where after I did the map, I went through it and I looked and I saw if it was completely off, it didn't look to me. But I think, you know, maybe to, taking a random sample, that would be a better way to do it. Um, yeah. And I, and I also saw the, the question there about uh, the, the titles, but I think I talked about that, that I did use uh, the title to, to determine gender. And just on a, uh, a comment on that, which might be interesting, uh, the city of Sao Paulo has another uh, open data set of street names. And uh, in that they have a shape file and they break up the name of the street by a name, first name, last name, title. So I, I could get the titles from there. So that was a good uh, place to get at like, what, what are kind of all the possible titles you, you can have for uh, someone named after a street? And I use that to then manually say, okay, Professor is male, professora is female, and, and then attribute from there when you do have a title. Right. There's, yeah, I think those, those were all the questions. Um, I wonder if you have um, this one, one question that's been struck out, but I sort of come back to that. Um, did you did you find any noticeable differences between regions? You zoomed into some cities in your talk and said that okay, there's some the ratio is slightly different, but is is there any systematic difference that you could identify? Like say, so, you know, in the north, again, it's generally different or something like that. I didn't, and again, I think that this would 
take the effort of, of being more, maybe more scientific or more systematic about this, uh, just by going through uh, the map and comparing different cities at the city level, I didn't see many differences looking at major streets, either in the north, the south, different regions of Brazil. But I did see kind of a pattern where you would have more um, female named streets in the periphery of many Brazilian metropol metropolises, uh, which we know usually in how Brazilian cities work, the peripheral areas are poorer than the, the city center. Uh, so that's where I put a point in the last slide. I didn't get much into it. I thought that was kind of loose about income. Uh, maybe it would be interesting to look at if there was a relationship about the income of the area, if poorer areas would have any higher probability of having more female streets. But again, that, that would need some additional research. Reading up on that uh, Brussels project earlier, they, uh, they also um, combined uh, that with, with some uh, political action, sort of trying to sort of uh, make this make this uh, imbalance public and sort of weigh on city officials to kind of maybe uh, try and uh, and uh, name a few more streets after after women to to balance this out. Is there any uh, is there any movement like this in Brazil that that might be able to take your data and run with it and say, hey, <laughs> let's make a change here? Um, not not that I know of. I mean, maybe I know there there are people doing research, uh, like more quantitative research on gender in 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 several aspects of society, uh, like that other research that I showed on uh, property ownership and gender uh, in like either renaming streets or naming new streets more uh, after women but that would be uh, definitely interesting um, the thing that has happened like one of the examples I did show was the renaming of a street uh, a highway from a general to the president that was overthrown by the military coup uh, so that was something that was introduced in 2016 in the city of Sao Paulo, where they actually passed a law that you could change the name of a street if the person that was uh, named after had committed crimes, like certain types of crimes. Um, but I haven't seen anything in the in the gender side of the discussion. Okay, um, in that case, I'd say. Um, Thank you, Bernardo, for your talk and uh, being here for the questions and answers. And I hope sure. you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thanks. Thank you.